you have to use the clap for it. All right. All right, back on. Not a clap. (laughs) No, no. I, I, he's, I have the clap. You're a clapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. had the clap. Yeah, it just it pops up every now and then, so I have to. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> it's just thing. You don't let me clap. It's just thing. <laughs> All, right. All right. Here we go. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're back on wrestling on Barstool <coughs> Sports. I am uh, Brandon Walker, and this is very exciting. This is very, very exciting because I've, since we started this podcast, I've been able to talk to some of the greatest stars of today, uh, Lance Archer, MJF, Chris Jericho, uh, Drew McIntyre, Stone Cold Steve Austin, who's not up today. But you know what I'm saying, some of the greatest stars in the business. But I have painted you this picture since I started this podcast three months ago of me, a seven-year-old boy in Mississippi in 1986 falling in love with wrestling, and it never escaped my mind. Today I get to go back in time with just a legend of the game, somebody that, that deeply affected my childhood that I've got to talk right off the bat about. His name is Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake Roberts here in AEW. He is uh, managing uh, Lance Archer. Jake, thank you for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure, man. Okay, here's my problem. I was 12 years old in 1991. And okay. you were in Mississippi. And I, that's a that, real problem. Well, that, it, you know what? Mississippi is a beautiful place. We got uh, we have to many be, acres. To be from. <laughs> I was uh, I, I was able to get my dogs out. We we had a good time. Yeah, a lot man. of land. A lot Absolutely. of wide open spaces. Absolutely. Great fried catfish. Love to do it. I love my catfish. <laughs> I love the fish. Period. So uh, I was living in Mississippi, and I was 12 years old. And I was terrified of snakes, which I could I could handle. Me too. I could handle. Is that true? Yeah, I, I heard that. I am terrified of them. I hate that doesn't it. sound right. I know it doesn't, but this is truth. You know, um, this whole snake thing came up. You know, because Kenny Stabler, right? Kenny, you yeah, know, the played for the Oakland Raiders, and uh, he was my hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a heady partier and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Broke the rules. Mm-hmm. Um, he's riding jet skis, yeah. he's got the shirt off. He's and he took, and he took, took uh, his offensive line out the night before the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got in like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. and Probably went, didn't go out to McDonald's. Probably and went, went out. to the game right. <laughs> and, and, and played. And won but, the game. Yeah, and won it. Yeah. You know, he, he was a winner. And um, one night I was driving down the road after a show, and I'm trying to think who I want to be. Mm-hmm. Snake. So, are you in Mid South at this point? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you do you realize that now there's been two generations of young boys? If they're named Jake, they have to be called the absolutely, snake. absolutely. Right? <laughs> That's just you crazy. did that. I know, man. It blows me away. It's like um, a few years ago, they were playing the um, uh, national championship, right, in football. Yeah. And uh, there was a kid called the Snake. Mm-hmm. You know, Jake. He uh, played for Arizona State. Arizona Jake State. Plummer. Yeah, Jake Plummer. Mm-hmm. And he took the name. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Right. You know? <laughs> and yeah. uh, stole my shit, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just keeps coming up, man. But I love it because I am terrified of snakes. I've always been terrified of snakes. I grew up in Texas, rattlesnakes, water moccasins, copperheads. Right. None of them good for you. And. Somebody said snake, man, I'd just damn near pee my pants. I would too. In fear. I hated you know? snakes. Oh my God. You know, and. So you said, let me take this thing that I'm scared of and just and carry it around well, for the rest of my life. No, I was just, I like the name. That's yeah. all. Right. Well, then as the craziness started happening, I went to Bill Watts because I was wrestling a guy called Humongous. Mm-hmm. And uh, he wore a hockey mask. Lord Humongous. Yes. Yeah wore a hockey mask and he was tearing my butt up. And I had to I had to come up with something to counter that hockey mask. Well, Bill Watts, I told him about the snake thing. He's like, this isn't a carnival, Jake. Mm-hmm. I'm like, really? Yeah. I thought it was. <laughs> come on, give me a break. If wrestling's not a carnival, I don't know what it is. It's kind of exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. <laughs> and he says, no, what we'll do is, I'll give you a hockey mask. I'm like, oh my God, that's so original. <laughs> he, he told me the snake thing would never well, work. Hockey games do have two goalies, Jake. Yeah, There's right. a goalie on each side, each side of the ice. Well, I don't think Watts knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so history, you know, we know where it is. You, you go to New York. 
Yeah. You, you slap a snake on your tights, they, they put a python in your hand, yeah. and you've got your Out career, the rest of your career is right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't know, though, that, that so, like, rattlesnakes are rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm. Cobras are cobras. Mm -hmm. Pythons are, are manageable snakes. Like, they're not going to, they're manageable, right? Semi. They're not poisonous. So they're if you're, not. If you're, scared, if you're scared of snakes, then you want to start a python, right? Actually, you should go to boas because they're smaller. Well, but, why didn't uh, you go to Boas? You had the choice. Because they look like wings, man. Come on, give me Can't a break. Can't be carrying a pussy snake in the ring. No, right? I couldn't, My man. Bad. You know? I wouldn't have been a very good uh, booker. I was just giving you the, the, the yeah. cutest little snake in the world. Yeah, I, I, you know, after I left uh, WWE, I went out and did you know, a lot of independence. Yeah. And I didn't carry a snake. And they, I'd go to these shows and they said, we got you one. I'm like, you got me a snake. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah. I, I go and I look at it, I'm like, are you serious? I'm not carrying that in the ring. It'd be about this long, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I can't do that, man. Right. You had the, I mean, the, the, the 12, 14 12, footers? 12, 14, 15, yeah. Good God. Yeah. So, so the way I started this was, I was just fine living my life as a 12 year old boy who believed in America and dreams and puppies yeah, and rainbows. Yeah, and then one day on, on Superstars, a Saturday at one o'clock in the afternoon, I watched Jake the Snake take, take a cobra and stick it on Savage's arm. Yeah, man. And like, I, that just. One of the best times of my life. I bet it was. <laughs> it was, uh, but I was watching, I was like, I, no, I don't wanna watch this. And it just, it just, it just shook me in my core. And I, I love wrestling, I love Jake, and I love everything. I, I know you've talked about that moment a oh, thousand yeah. times, but yeah. who, was it your idea? Was it his idea? Uh, it was Vince's idea. Really? Yeah. And um, I jumped on it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd come well, up with that. the snake's not biting you. Yeah, well, I'd gotten bitten several times, you know, by, by, the, by the pythons, man, and they really mess you up when they bite you. Yeah. I mean, they're right there, that little hole there. Goodness. 24 stitches. Off a python bite. Yeah, and he got the vein, too, which is not a good thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, a snake committed, Most times. A snake committed suicide over that. Really? Yeah, they got feelings, too, I guess. But. Yeah, I, he bit me and I took him to the back and I picked him up. Why did you bite me? And then he, I seen his look in his eye and he, he just raised up and he dove his head at the wall. Unbelievable. And I pulled him back and he overpowered me and hit the wall again. Just over and over? I couldn't stop him. That's unbelievable. He <laughs> killed himself. <laughs> well, might have been what was running it through really your brain at the time. It really hurt. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that, that savage program. Yeah, the Cobra. Thing, it was yeah. one of the most uh, shocking programs I'd ever seen because right. there have been so many feuds. You know, the good guy does this, the bad guy yeah. does this, and we have you guys really tore into each other. Tore into it, and um, maybe a little bit too much for Savage. Yeah. Um, but it made for great TV. It made great television, and we were supposed to go to WrestleMania with that. Yeah. But Savage. And his lovely wife at the time, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. uh, had a family that was, well, let's say, backwoods. Right. Yo, I know that very well. The salt of the earth, mm -hmm. you know, and um, they didn't know wrestling was a show. Right. They were very upset with Randy because yeah. pro he had promised them that no, Elizabeth will never get hurt. Yeah. And they see her being slapped by me. At this Tuesday in Texas. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, what's next, Randy? You know, come on, give me a, yeah. you promised us. And her family said, that's it. You get the hell out of here. Really? And don't come back. Yeah. They ran him off the property. Man. So now he's having to fight with them over Elizabeth. Yeah. Because Elizabeth, you know, she, she's going to be right there with her family, man. Uh, yeah. And he was like, my life's screwed, man. You know? So, but that ended up, uh, you, you, you <coughs> do the Undertaker stuff for WrestleMania, mm -hmm. and he ends up doing the Flair stuff. Yeah. It ended up being a very good WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, it was. But uh, that was uh, the end of it right there. Because I've been promised a lot of things by Vince. And the yeah. one thing that I wanted more than anything was to be a writer. Yeah. Um, Behind the scenes, kind of yeah, mapping the, things the out Lord, for everybody. The Lord blessed me with a mind that can do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I did start writing for Vince later on, 96, yeah. he was amazed at what I could do with this thing up here yeah. on my shoulders. Because I, I don't know how it happens, but if they want a storyline or something, I can go outside and 
smoke yeah. a cigarette and come back in and I'd give them six months. Really? Stories, boom, 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 boom. They're like, what the hell, where'd you get that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But it was your mind that, that, that made you one of the great promos right. in the business. Right. So that's what, that's right. what translated, right? Great storyteller, you know, and uh, that, that came from the dark side of Jake. Yeah. Well, I, I want to ask for one more old school question, then I want to get to AEW with Lance Archer and everything that's going mm -hmm. on good, because, you know, you talk about the dark side of Jake. We're, we're not in the dark side of Jake anymore, right? No, sir. I'm, we're we're he, on the other he's side. He's all right. He's, he's gone. So we're going we're gonna to talk about we're gonna talk about AEW. I want to talk about one more old school story. Yeah. Uh, can a 300 or 400 pound man sitting on a python really kill it? I always wondered that. No. I don't think it can no. either. No. I, 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 that was Vince's idea too. To kill Damien by, by having an earthquake sit on it. Yeah. I was, even as a kid, I was like, I don't think that would kill him. Well, I don't think so either, but uh, that was a fun thing I did too, you know. Uh, yeah. Vince wanted me to be knocked out of the ring yeah. when the snake got squashed. Right. I'm you like, were tied up, right? Yeah. I said, Vince, that's not heat. Yeah. The heat would be to, for me to have to watch mm -hmm. my wife be mm -hmm. raped, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So this is my wife, the snake. I have to sit there and the rope be tied up and then watch my lover be killed. Mm -hmm. That's, dr that's, that's drama right there. That's where the heat's at. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I went so far as, okay, we gotta make this really right. We gotta put something in the bag. Yeah. Was it ground like beef? It was ground beef and pantyhose. <laughs> I don't know who comes up with that idea. I did. <laughs> <You> did. <laughs> So, so when he squashed it, blood come out. Who know? stuffed the, did you have like an intern no, backstage yeah, the stuffing inter the, the interns sausage? were doing that, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. but I, it really showed, it, it was the most preposterous bit of acting I've ever seen, Jake, when you had to look in the back. And it's, <laughs> and it's oh, oh my God, the horror of it all. <laughs> I, mean, I thought I did a great job. You did a great job, yeah. but when you got to the back, you had to just laugh hysterically. Oh, I did. What well, did I do? Especially when I walked through the curtain, they got the RSPCA waiting on me. Right. And this lady was bone RSPCA, man. Yeah. She was crying. Oh, she was really upset. You bastard. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is hamburger meat. She goes, but look out there. Right. Look at me. <laughs> I thought you killed the thing. I, right. I didn't kill it, that guy did. <laughs> right. You let him. You know, and I'm like, oh my God. That's unbelievable. She, she talked to me for 20 minutes about how wrong that was. Oh my God, it, it did affect a lot of people. There, yeah, there were a lot of kids crying, you know. Yeah. I cried all the way to the bank. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mentioned, you know, I'm 41. I was seven in 1986. Uh, I grew up through the, that era. Hogan, yeah, Savage, the you. Best, the best of the best. It was, it was unbelievable. Just the, the, the characters, yeah. the, the... Bigger than life. It was bigger than life. It was back then. You can look back, and I, I told Lance this, but you, you think kids grew up then. And I did grow up idolizing Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, yeah. Joe Montana. The very best of the best but, were in the 80s. But Savage, Hogan, Perfect, Jake were right there with them yeah. to me. You, you guys were superheroes. Now, that's what hooked, you guys hooked me into wrestling, mm. and I stayed hooked forever. Yeah, man. So, October 2019, a new company comes around, mm. and uh, we, we've been used to one company dominating the scene in, the, right, in, in this right, country for a long, right. long time. Too a, long. New, a new company comes around, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna give this company a shot. And the first episode on TNT, I'm, I'm hooked. I think they've got a great product. Uh, Kenny Omega, Moxley, Jericho, everything's good. But then there was a couple of weeks into the run, you just show up. And I, the 12-year-old the in me says, oh my God, Jake, this Not is like on TV. No, I was, excited. I was like, oh, thank you, God. This is gonna be great. I didn't know you were bringing Lance Archer. Uh, and when you guys hooked up, it was great. But what, what, what was your journey to AEW? And, and I'm not talking about the dark side into the yeah. DDP stuff. I'm just talking mm -hmm. about when it comes to signing with the company, mm -hmm. what, what went ahead and knocked you over the fence as far as I gotta be with this group? You know, after you've lived through McMahon, mm -hmm. it it leaves you soured. Yeah. You know, he uh, he he destroyed a lot of people, man. Yeah. A lot of people, and um, that's his problem, you know. But so it soured you on the business. It soured that. Well, it soured me on promotions. Okay. On the big ones. Yeah because I knew what they could do to a human being. And 
and th th they were able to steal your dreams. Yeah. And um, I see this as an opportunity to regain and recover mm -hmm. my dream. Yeah. And um, that was just doing whatever I could in wrestling. And they opened the door just a little bit. Yeah. And um, I came to AEW with a contract that said 10 weeks. Yeah. Only 10 weeks and then I was going to be done. And very quickly, <laughs> they decided they wanted to keep me around. So that was a year and a half ago. Yeah. And uh, so when you came to the company, was it was it Tony that brought you in or was it a wrestler that Tony. said it was Tony? Mm -hmm. Well, Tony grew up a fan like me. is about mm -hmm. the same age. Absolutely. So that, that makes a yeah. lot of sense that he would yeah. be. Because if I were starting a wrestling company and I needed like veteran presence, Jake the Snake is somebody. Yeah, and I was so blown away by Tony because he knew more about Jake the Snake than I did. I've, I've heard he that. He is a... <laughs> a savant. Of the business, man. And it, not just Jake. Yeah. He can give you whatever you want from whatever year you want. Yeah. He's an amazing man. And the thing that gets me about AEW is their real love for wrestling. And wrestlers. Yeah. And wrestlers. So. Wrestler, the wrestlers here have not screwed it up yet. <laughs> you sign with AEW. Mm -hmm. uh, you make your, uh, was it one appearance or two appearances? I think it was one appearance. And then Lance came in the, mm -hmm. either the next week or a couple of weeks later. Right. When you, when you came into AEW, when you, because when you, there were still crowds in the stands, yeah. right? Yeah. Man. When you made Beautiful. that appearance and being away as long as you were, when, when you come out and the crowd's like, oh my God, they how they feel? Nuts. I almost cried. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it's well documented. I, I went to a dark place for several years right. and, and uh, came out of it with a friend. Yeah. And, um, Diamond Dallas Page. Right. And uh, he helped me get back on my feet. And uh, to this day, I, I've still not broken yeah. that rule, which is no drinking, no drugs, stay clean. Right. Well, congratulations. Robert. Thank you very much, man. It's the proudest thing I've ever done. Yeah. And uh, the hardest thing that I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> but so when I walked out and they just boom, mm -hmm. and it was, it had been 20 years, mm -hmm. almost to the day. That long? That I'd been away from wrestling. Was, was it 96 that was your last time? Yeah. So. It's been just over 20 years, and to come out and be greeted with the noise yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. And it's one of the few things that I like about the internet. What's that? That they, in television, they can put old wrestling on the air and people watch it, people still fall in love with it, and they get hooked. So that is something I do every night. I watch the network every night. Yeah. And I, I will watch uh, old stuff. I just like to fall asleep to old stuff. It's comforting. Yeah. It takes me back to nostalgia. Yeah, man. And I think there's a ton of people out there that even even young kids can watch Absolutely. you and, it, and fall it, in love with it. It blows me away when I, I go to these signings and stuff. A kid will walk up. He's eight years old. Jake, I love you. I'm like, you don't even know who I am. Right. Yeah. You know? But he does. But he does. Yeah. I mean, they know more about me than I do, you yeah. know, and it's so good for me, because I can ride this wave the rest of my life now, and, and still be meeting people that are falling in love. Yeah, which is what wrestling's about, right? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you were there for a week, and then mm -hmm. you bring out Lance Archer. Mm -hmm. I, there are many great tandems in AEW. The, the tandem of Arn and Cody is very interesting because mm -hmm. of the history there mm -hmm. in the family. Uh, Tully and the tag team FTR, that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Tully's one of the great tag team wrestlers. Mm -hmm. But I think the team of you and uh, Lance Archer is phenomenal. Yeah. And I don't know if you could hand pick a wrestler better for you because you've got yeah. the psychological thing. You, you can do the talking and lay out the groundwork and then he just goes out and destroys and people. just destroys people. Did, when, this, when you came to AEW, was it to be with Lance Archer or yeah. was it just to, yeah. be, to be determined? Yeah. How did you feel yeah. about that tandem at first? I did not know Lance Archer. Yeah. I had never seen Lance wrestle. Yeah, because he was in Japan for most right. of the last 10 years. Right, right. And I'd never seen him wrestle. 
But when they offered me the opportunity, I jumped on it. I, I, Lance Archer, whoever, I was just going to go out there and do what I do right. and let them do what they do, you know, because uh, that's the only way it'll work. I cannot be the guy in the ring anymore. Right. Yeah. And uh, he does a great job, makes it very easy for me. Well, you, you've been around for a long time. You've seen a lot of big men. Yeah. He's six, seven, six, eight. Yeah. And he, he can absolutely be the punisher. He can, he can go aerial if you want to. He has a very special skill set. Does he remind you of anybody? No. I, me either. No. There has not been a big man do what he can do in the ring. Do you, do you, have, a, do you have trouble when you're outside and you see, particularly the rope walk into the mm -hmm. moonsault, mm -hmm. which even smaller guys can't mm -hmm. do? Right. When you see that, do you have a trouble not like popping for that? Like, like oh, you, you got to stay. Of course with, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I pop a lot during the show, man. Lance, he's a bull in that ring, brother. He'll run over you. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And uh, I love it when he runs over somebody, man. It's like, oh, God almighty, I'm so glad I'm not in there. You know, it's like I'm so grateful I'm not the guy being crushed right here. Right. So uh, you're, you're in AEW. You've mm -hmm. been there for, for a year. I don't know what your future plans are, but you seem to be very happy with what you're doing. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. how do you... Not just Jake Roberts, but uh, how do you feel about AEW as a whole going forward? Because it really, I know we've had COVID, we haven't had crowds, mm -hmm. but it's still been able to maintain this place. Yeah. And it's so uniquely positioned. I think, yeah. I think this company's really got something. They're going to wear Vince McMahon's ass out. You think so? I do. Which yeah. nobody's ever been able to nobody's do. Nobody's ever been able to do. You know, WCW for a period did it, but... Didn't have staying These power. guys are doing it, and guess what? They're doing it at the worst possible time. Right. With COVID. You know, with this COVID thing hit, man, I didn't know if we were going to survive it. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if they were going to stop wrestling completely. Yeah. You know? Well, there was a period in April where we thought we might not be able to have a weekly right, show. Right, right. But they were able to power through they, it. They powered through it, man, and uh, the people behind the scenes kept everybody healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the things I commend them for, man, is, is their love for the athletes and their care of the athletes. Yeah. You know, they have people in the back that, that know how to handle injuries, um, and they don't have people in the back that know how to handle me. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're, how difficult is that do, these days? It's still difficult. <laughs> you know, uh, Jake wants to do more. Right. And, uh, Jake still hasn't gotten it through his thick skull that he's 65. Yeah. And man, every now and then it'll start bubbling and it's like, you got a couple matches left, man, right. come on. You know who you are. And I'm still not ruling that out. So. Well, what was it like to watch Tully last night, right? Oh, that pissed me off. Yeah, because he's in there doing yeah. it. And yeah, I wanted to jump him when he came back, <laughs> back, but he was—he didn't come to the back. He was out there signing autographs and yeah. taking pictures and back on top of the world. Yeah, man, man he was, brother. I'm so proud of him. Do, do you guys in uh, like AEW has such a reverence for the guys who, who built this, the, like Arns, the, the you, Tully, and on and on and on? Uh, do you guys ever like talk in the back like this is just a great place for us? It's great because you got it because you, Arn, Tully, you all have been through the wars. Yeah. Yeah, we do, man. We we are so grateful and amazed at how much this company does. I mean, you know, they they went through another tough time too with the passing of uh, sure. John. You know, that was so brutal. Mm -hmm. And again, Tony stepped up mm -hmm. and did so much for their family. Yeah, and he's still doing it. Yeah. Still do it. It is uh, incredible to watch. It is so lovely to watch. Yeah. You know, he makes me feel like the guy I always dream about being. Really? Yeah. You know, with the love he has, you know, it's just amazing. So this is the right place for you. The it's right time. the only place for me. Because the other places I would not survive. I want to, and I'll let you get out of here because I know you got your busy oh, guy. I'm having fun, man. Um, so, you you mentioned DDP, mm -hmm. and it is well documented mm -hmm. that uh, you 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 had struggles like many of us do. Oh yeah. Uh, and DDP was a guy that reached out to you, offered you some help, offered you some programs, and, and got you through it. Yeah. Um, you're you're going on what four or five years, maybe more than that, that 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 you've been on the right side of this thing. Ten. 
10 years. Ten yeah, years I knew it was now. more than that. Yeah. So 10 years you've been on the right side of this thing. Yeah. Um, do you still, how often do you still talk to DDP? Oh, all the time. You know, Checking in on you or we're, just? We're brothers in life, man. I check in on him, he checks in on me. We throw thoughts back and forth. Uh, we have business opportunities together. Yeah. Uh, just a lot. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of love. A lot of love. And um, that will be forever. It, it seems like from the outside, I, I'm not in it, mm -hmm. but wrestling can be a very cruel business. Yes, it, can. it can be very rough. Yeah. To have a guy like him, mm -hmm. to, to be a, a help to, to you, mm -hmm. Scott, mm -hmm. other guys, mm -hmm. that's rare, isn't it? It seems like very rare in any walk of life. It is. It is very rare that anybody will stand up for you the way he stood up for me. Um, you know, yeah, man, I lived with him for three years. Yeah. Because that's how long it took for me to get clean. Well, it's not easy. No, it wasn't. It's <laughs> not and, easy for anybody. And, um, you know, you don't do something for 50 years yeah. and quit on day one, you right. know? There were some struggles. There were some rough times. There were times that I wasn't allowed to travel alone. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, any, any uh, cost was deferred to me. You know, so I'm going out and doing events, and I'm having to pay somebody just coming along with me, their airfare, their hotel, their food, and take, pay them for their time. Right. But it was the right thing to do, and that's where I'm at in my life. At 65 years old, I have to be smart enough to do the right thing. Right. The right thing, because the wrong thing could end Jake. And I, I just, you know, I got sick here a while back, man, and... Uh, I almost died, you know, and um, during, you know, just a few months ago. I don't, uh, are people aware of that? No. No, I, uh, Was it COVID? No, it wasn't. It just a thing that happens with people like me that are foolish that wind up smoking cigarettes and mm -hmm. uh, it got me down, man, and it was stomping a hole in me. And I woke up one morning and I started coughing and I couldn't quit. And then when I did quit, I had no air. I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I mean, I was, <coughs> it could not get any air in. Right. And I, I, I went, I fell to the floor and I reached out and grabbed the phone and I called my daughter and she lives like four minutes from me. Yeah. And she got her ass over there, scooped me up, dragged me to the fucking, you know, dragged That's me fun. to the um, hospital and almost died, almost died. My lungs, uh, they barked. <laughs> they said, enough, man, uh, you gotta stop, Jake. You're killing us. And bottom line, I have COPD, I have emphysema, yeah. and uh, my own doing. And um, unfortunately, my family, we have a couple of lung issues anyway, sure. you know, genetically, and um, I did not know that. Here you sit today. Here I am today, and everything is beautiful. It, it makes me feel so good, man. I mean, oh man, she's gonna kill me for this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. The love of my life did the hardest thing there was to do, which was tell me to leave. Yeah. And um, get out of the house. It was 24 years ago, man, and um, we're getting back together. Really? Yeah, man. Oh my God. I mean, I'm in love again. What a... Wow. What an incredible turn of events. Yeah, it's unbelievable, man. I mean, I, she went through hell with me, man, and she was watching me destroy myself, and she had to be strong enough to get me out of that house so I didn't hurt the kids. Yeah and make them watch it. And I owe her so much, man. I mean, she's such a beautiful woman. I'm so grateful to her. And uh, to be given the opportunity to treat her the way I should have been treating her. I was never abusive to her, right. don't, don't get me wrong. But- Just taking care of yourself. I didn't take care of myself, mm -hmm. and uh, she wasn't gonna watch it, man. Yeah. But for her to, to make me get out of the house was tough, man divorced me, and, um, but she did it, she had to do it. And then for it to turn around and to fall in love again, well, it's just 
Absolutely. You have Absolutely. lived one of the most fascinating lives I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, you're in a place now that is almost, uh, it's stunning to see. Congratulations on that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a hell of a story. It's the, great, the greatest place to be because there's so much love here, man. Uh, you have it in, in you have it in your home now. Yeah, man. You have it with the people around yeah. you, and you have it with your place of employment. Yeah, man. I don't. I, I, Everything's coming up roses, man. Everything's coming up, Jake. Yeah. I mean, I wake up to new opportunities every day. You know. Where's uh, what's the future look like for you, man? I know everything man. sounds good. I mean, it sounds yeah. like you're just headed on a rocket ship. Where I'm on a rocket ship that, that wants to go this way, <laughs> right. not go this way. Yeah. Um, I want to do more movies. Yeah. You know, I did Peanut Butter Falcon, and I've done some others. And to me, it's like falling off a log. You know? yeah. I, mean, I go in that business, and they're so amazed that they don't need 20 takes. Yeah. Well, you they know? don't understand that you. Yeah, you know, that my nickname in the WWE was One Take Jake. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, we, back in the day, we would do 75, 85, 90 mm -hmm. interviews. At television, mm -hmm. and to roll through all those, so you do it through the entire night. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, to roll through two weeks and three weeks of interviews that's going to be played in all these markets, and not fumble, bumble, fall. They were amazed. How great was Gene for that? Oakland. Yeah, <laughs> he was. He was great, man. He was simple. Him and I, we 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 butted heads at first because Gene is a star in his own right. Yeah. You know, but Gino had a real thing of wanting to get that last shot in, yeah. which made him big boy. Right. I don't He's put very up with good that. at it too. I though. don't put up with that. Okay. okay. And I told him that. I said, Gene, if you try to one up me, you will see the snake again. <laughs> and he was terrified of that snake. Yeah. I said, as long as you don't do that, I will never get the snake near you. But if you do, the snake can come out. He will be around you. Man, what an yeah. what a incredible, what a, what a great threat to have. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> what a great threat to have. Like, like, it's, if, better, it's better than a stick. If yeah. you had problems in the locker room, which I'm sure you had from time to time, yeah. you, in this bag over here, I, I have problems plenty, all. I had plenty of room. Right. <laughs> you know, they all knew that they'd shower before the night was over, and they knew that I didn't mind throwing the snake in the shower. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know that we're running up on time. I'll let you go, but I have one more question. I've asked this of a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. people that are veterans like yourself. Mm -hmm. I got into this. I've, I've been in, uh, on camera for 10, 15 years, but I got into wrestling because I want to explore the humor and everything because of one man. His name was Bobby Heenan. Yeah. Bobby Heenan is my favorite personality to ever be in wrestling. Yeah. He was uh, a comedian, a wrestler, a manager. He was everything. Yeah. And every time I have somebody to spend any time with him, I just ask, what was what was he like? What was it like working with that guy? Oh, it was amazing. Bobby's so quick, yeah. so quick. It was Johnny Carson. Yeah, he was so quick, man. God Almighty, man. He was one of my favorites. Yeah, he was fun to watch. He was fun to be around the locker room. He was fun to watch in front of people. Yeah. Uh, amazing performer. That was him, right? He was never off. Yeah. He was always on. Yeah, it was a great moment. It was a great time with him. Well, let me ask one more question. Um, you're with Lance Archer. There's a the pay-per-view revolution. It is, mm -hmm. it is since passed. But every Wednesday night on Dynamite at 8 p.m. on TNT, you're out there with Lance Archer. I think the sky's the limit for that guy. Absolutely. And meaning the sky's also the limit for you yeah. in this current capacity. Yeah. What, is, what does 2021 look like for you guys? <sighs> there is no limits. I don't you think know? there is. Either. Some people say, well, the sky's the limit. No, no, not for us. We're going beyond the sky, man. This guy can take me to Mars and back. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's the perfect person for me because he lives a clean life. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's tight with the Lord. That's yeah. a good thing. You know, faith is what got me through a lot. And, um, yeah, he's a perfect guy for me. There's no stopping him, you know, physically. Oh, my God, are you serious? And there's no stopping us because I'm not going to do the wrong thing. And uh, the pair of us together, man, who are you going to get yeah. to, to match up with us? It's, it's not the, there's no one out there. It's a very short list if there's anybody at all. Yeah. He dwarfs most people by far. So there's no, there's no limit there. And for me, oh, man, 
with the movies that, that are coming at me and the people that are coming at me with opportunities, I'm going to listen to the opportunities. Yeah. But I am not going to walk out on AEW. I don't care what is offered me. So this is home. This is where I want to be. If, if Tony came to me and said, hey, Jake, we got to save some money, um, you know, sorry. I uh -huh. said, well, do you mind if I just show up on my own? <laughs> because yeah. that's what I would do it. Yeah. I would do it. Tony, please don't do that to me. No, no, no. no. <laughs> then we'll show up in that part. <laughs> anyway, Jake, fascinating. You, you're one of my favorites from when I was a kid, and you remain one of my favorites now. And uh, just an incredible human being, an incredible story. That's wrestling.